I'm going to be talking about leveraging the curriculum for elementary age students. But even if you don't have elementary age students, I promise you'll still find something that's useful. I've taught all grades from pre-K to eighth grade. And yes, there are differences between the ages, especially when you're talking like kindergarten versus eighth grade, but there are things that are the same. So I hope this will be useful to everyone. And I'm going to admit that when I planned this, I thought I had 30 minutes for some reason, and I only have 20. I'm going to do my best to talk at a not too fast pace, but still get a lot of um, great strategies you can use with VOSES in your classroom. We're going to look at pre-story activities, story activities, post-story activities, and extension activities. Oh, I think... All right, so here we go. What we're gonna learn is, and by the way, um, I don't think I said this yet, I did spend 18 years in the classroom, PK through eighth. I was the Michigan World Language Teacher of the Year in 2020, and I have spent a lot of time in education and working with teachers, so I'm really excited to share with all of you today. Um, so we're gonna talk about total physical response, Empezamos activities, which are activities you do before you get into the story, and then extension activities right now. Total physical response is just the act of creating emotion to go with the word. And the reason we do that is because in your head, and I'm going to resist talking about the brain too much because I'm talking about it later today, you have neurons and axons that send signals, and that's how you process all of the information. And the more often you process something, the better you become at processing it. So we want our students to get as many examples of um the keywords as we can. And when we do an action that connects to the word, the neurons in your brain that fire together, wire together. And so that connects the action to meaning that helps our students acquire the words more quickly. So if I was going to be using this set of words for total physical response, I would show the students the words I want to TPR and I won't TPR all of the words, but va -a is like this. So do va -a if you don't mind, va -a. And I would just tell the students that means goes to, I is there is or there are, and I just point to something in my hand, like there is something there, I. And then I would just practice it a few times, va, a, and I. And then I would tell my students, I like to tell them they're gonna be like detectives. And then they're gonna use their eyes and ears to try and figure out what they're saying. And so for the emotions, I would even have them on the board, but then I would show feliz, happy, and have them all guess, guess what feliz means. They're not really guessing, it's right in front of them. But what we're doing is we're getting them to read extra and we're building confidence that they can learn a language. I would go over all of the emotions that way. Feliz, triste, enojado, and tengo miedo. The kids think it's super fun to practice those. And even older kids like practicing the emotions. And you can kind of coach them to be more happy or more sad or more angry. And that, that gives you lots of chances to repeat these words. And we'll also create lots of laughs in the classroom. Um, now, and I don't know why my little my little um, thing didn't come up, but in the classroom, we have these empezamos activities that you'll see right here in Primaria. And these are activities that you do that allow you to use the chapter vocabulary in authentic ways before you are um, getting into the stories. And they are both ways to authentically exchange information, but they're also ways to play with the language. And when the students use the language as a game, they barely even realize that they're learning a language. And this first activity I'm going to talk to you about is Actividad Uno, Activity One, and it's Como Estas. And I will tell you, um, I had, I'm sorry, my slides are out of order. I had a student come into my classroom and she was showing her brother my, my room during open house. And she was like, these are profes toys and these are our props and these are our books. And she goes, and actually, we talk in Spanish here the whole time, but we don't ever think about that because we're just playing games. And so if we have the kids engaged in Spanish in a way that's fun and exciting for them, they barely realize they're learning a language. This first activity, this first Empezamos activity is one of the most powerful activities I have. And it's just basically the students sit in a circle and I ask them how they're feeling. Como estas? And the first day the students show me on their faces how they're feeling and I say the word for them. And then... Um, we proceed and very, very quickly within a class or two, they'll be saying the words back, back to me. And then very quickly after that, they'll be like, profe, I'm not happy or sad or mad or scared. I'm hungry. How do I say I'm hungry? And then you give them that word. And almost within a few months, your shared classroom vocabulary with, with this activity will go from, you know, four words 
all the way to this, what I have right here, because the kids will want to know, how do I say I feel this? And how do I say I feel this? And I've done this all the way up to eighth grade. And kids love to share about themselves. It lights up parts of your brain that are associated with reward um, and, and give you dopamine hits. But it's also an authentic exchange of language that you can build upon in the classroom. And this is just the first Empezamos activity in um, Primaria 1. But I recommend using it with all of your classes in one way or another because you'll get to know your students so well and you'll build such community and such an authentic exchange of language with this activity. And all of the Empezamos activities are designed to build community, to get extra repetitions of the words, and to build authentic use of the language. Now, with these same words, I, of course, love to play charades with the students. They think charades are amazing. You can do it with any word that you've TPR'd. And when I first start playing charades with the students, I just project the vocabulary. The student gets up and acts. Whoever guesses the way they're feeling correctly gets to go next, or they get to pick the person to go next if they don't want to go. Once um, we have played charades for a little while, I let the students pick two words to act out at the same time. That always gets really fun for the students to act out more than one word at the same time, and it increases the complexity of the game. You can do this with any set of TPR words, not just with the ones in front of you. And then finally, the last activity for the story that I'm about to show you um, is really, really great because it gives the students lots of practice um, be using a sta and es which are ones that we, you know, are crucial for the language and we want to get lots of extra repetitions of, but it's also a game, right? So here, and it, and it also teaches them something about the world, so it kind of hits all the marks. Here, this says, I una alpaca, and for our non-Spanish speakers, there is an al alpaca. Donde esta la alpaca? Where is the alpaca? And the kids have to find it, and I usually have my kids say, esta aquí, it's right here, and they get to come up and point it on the board, and they love doing that. And then the next slide is, La alpaca es de las montañas. The alpaca is from the mountains. So we're starting to get them to learn about different places in the world, extra repetitions of es and de, and then we're getting them to learn about geography with montañas, and the rest of the slides proceed in the same way. There is a dog. Where is the dog? The kids would say the dog is here. You could have them come up and show everyone. And then the dog is with the girl. So lots of extra practice of key vocabulary words. Where is, or there is a scorpion. Where is the scorpion? He's really hard to see. He's right here. He's very, very well camouflaged. And the kids get really excited when they find those hard to see ones. And then the scorpion is from the desert. So you're using really, really accessible language that's going to make the kids feel really confident with vivid images. And it's a game where they're trying to hunt for something, but they're learning about the world at the same time. And all of these Empezamos activities are designed that way. And you can use these for lots and lots of different stories. Now, when you are actually reading the story, there's a bunch of different ways you can read this story too. You can read it and ask questions. You can read it and have the class translate. You can do student actors. Or with the Vose stories, they all have native speaker audio. And I'm just going to show you really quickly. That native speaker audio can be slowed down or sped up, depending upon the students that you have right in front of you. And actually, I'm just realizing that when I shared, I don't think I shared my, my um, audio. So give me just one second so that this actually works correctly. There we go. So with the native speaker audio, if you scroll down when you hit play. Hay una chica. La chica se llama Carlota. If I hit this. Hay un perro. El perro se llama Cholo. I can speed up or slow down the audio to meet the needs of the students I have right in front of me, which I think is really, really powerful. All of the stories in Primaria start with a map and a picture of the flag. Students love to know about where they are in the world. So you could have this map. You could pull up a world map. You could show where you are, the country we're learning about. You could do comparisons. There's so much you can do with maps, and students absolutely love maps. Nothing to talk about. And then here we have the actual story. You could read the story and ask your students questions. I una chica with the, I always like to gesture as I read. I una chica. Last day, class, 
hay una chica o hay un chico? Is there a girl or is there a boy? You'll see, I'm holding up my fingers. I like to try and number my answers where I can so the students that aren't ready to produce can show me on their finger what the answer is. So that's a really handy little trick there too. La chica se llama Carlota. Clase, la chica se llama Carlota o Bob. Carlota o Bob. And students can answer and they can engage with the text that way. A different way you can read it, and sometimes I'll do this on the second reading because I like to use my stories more than once, is I will read it and then the kids will um, translate the English for me. So I would read it like this. I would point at the words like you see my cursor and I go, I un perro. Clase en inglés. And then I point at the words there and the kids would all say, there is a dog. El perro se llama Cholo. And then I would say clase en inglés. And they would all read with me. The dog is called Cholo. And we would go through the whole story that way. And that's extra reading. And again, it's just making the kids feel really, really confident about what they're doing. The other way you can do this, of course, is with student actors. And student actors bring a lot of life to the story. So in this, I would have two student actors, or maybe three. Um, I would have Carlota, the girl, Cholo, the dog, and I might even have La Puerta, the door. Students love to be like background images and stories, and they think it's really funny to like be the door that opens and closes and squeaks, and it engages some of your introverts or kids who don't want to like fully act in the story, and it helps them be a part of the acting. So if I was acting this out with stories, with students, not stories. Un día, Cholo causa problemas. One day, Cholo causes problems. And then whoever is a dog would be like, ur, 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 and would do something that was a problem. And the kids will use their own like creativity to create the problem. And it usually leads to lots of laughter in the classrooms. Carlota no está feliz. So over Carlota would look angry. And you could coach them to look angrier. Be like, más, eno más uh, enojada. Carlota está enojada. And then they'll look really angry. And then right here, Carlota has a line. And so you could have the student, you could coach the student to say the words. But also, if you are you have a student actor who loves acting but isn't ready to say the words, you could stand in front of or behind the student and have them just move their mouth. And you could say the words for them. Solo, Pablo, Pablo, estoy enojada. And the kids think that's absolutely hilarious, and it really enables any kid to be an actor in your story. So these are all different ways you can engage with a story while you're reading the story. You'll also notice right here that it says print story. And um, the print story is really, really great because you can go ahead and make books for your students. They can take it home and read it. They can color it. That's all right there for you, too. Now, just so you know the rest of the story, um, Carlota's dad, because the dog escapes and she goes looking for him in different locations and a scorpion almost gets her and then the dog comes back and saves her and there is a happy ending there together at the end. So don't worry, there's a happy ending in the story. I just fast forwarded through all of that, though, so I could go over um, other activities you can do with the story. And please tell me if I'm going too fast. I'm trying to make good use of your time. Um, and share all the things in a very short amount of time. So what we're going to learn is using the Veamos videos, some Voces activities you can do, Reader's Theater or Gesture Reading, and then what you can do with coloring pages and comic strips. I'm a little ambitious, but I think I can do it. Okay, so the Veamos videos, I really love these. If you grew up in the 80s like me, you might remember those videos that are kind of like storybooks, but with just like, um, you know, a little bit of movement in the camera and sound effects. And that's what the Veamos videos are. And sometimes I'll, I will play them and have kids act out the story as they listen to them. Sometimes I'll just play them as the kids are coming into the class. And they'll sit down and they'll get excited to watch them. And then they'll be like, hey, I only watched part of it. Can we watch it again? And that's just, again, extra repetitions, right? Just like with any Vosé's video, you can slow down or speed it up here. La chica y el perro. So that's at point seven five. Here's normal. Hay una chica. La chica se llama Carlota. Hay un perro. El perro se llama Cholo. Cholo no es un perro normal. 
Cholo es un perro especial. And we won't take the time to watch the whole Vamos video, but they really are fabulous. The kids love them, and they're a great way for them to hear the story in a slightly different way. Um, so the Voces activities, we have activities that are planned to go with each of the stories. And the Voces activities with my youngest students, what I usually do is I project these on the board, and then we do them together as a class. There is um, sound with some of the, with the multiple choice activities. Carlota está, is she feliz, enojada, o triste. I would have my students raise their hand if they knew the answer. And then I would have them come up to the board and tap the board. And then I usually try and tap it at the same time on my computer so they think, because I didn't have a smart board, that they're actually picking the answers. And I really love that. So you could do it that way. Um, with my older students, we will do one or two as a class. And then I'll have them go do it on their own because it increases their, like, their confidence. Uh, these are matching activities. Again, do it as a class with your younger students, do it all together or in small groups, um, or even do it as a game. This one is an activity where you put the story in the correct order. You could have these cut out as sentence strips, have the kids go ahead and put them in the right order, and then you could go around and see who did it fastest. So there's lots of different ways you could do these. You don't have to just do them as activities in the computer. They can be interactive activities that you do with your class. And then because we know kids love to draw and there's lots of great things you can do with those drawing activities, I'll come right back to that one. We also have a drawing section where the students are asked to draw like here, where is Chola? Like, where did he go? Draw a picture of what Chola's doing while he was away from Carlota. And you can have those student pictures. Your more advanced students could write a sentence talking about where he is. You could hang them around the room. You can make a whole book about Cholo's adventures when he's not with Carlota. There's so much um, that you can get out of these pictures. It's not just, you know, a quick drawing for students. And then here, it actually allows students to record um, what, the, what they think happened in each part of the story. This might be something for your more advanced students, or it might be something for all your students, just depending upon where the class is at. Okay, talking really fast, but I'm hoping to just get a few more things in before my time is up. Uh, Reader's Theater is another great way to leverage the story. And one of the things I like to do is just to break the students up into however many characters there are in the story. For this story, I might go Carlota, the scorpion slash the door, because students really like to be the door and the dog. And you have your students break up in groups all over the classroom. You read the story or just play the audio from Voces and you watch your students act it out. And what that tells you is who, like, you can look around the room and see, like, who knows what they're supposed to do and who's looking around the room to see what other people are doing. And that's really a good, quick way to measure how well your students know the story. Another favorite um, activity is to do... Uh, to do sound, what I call sound stage. And this is something I learned from Christy Placido many years ago. And basically, you read the story and your students just make sound effects in the background. And I would like to try this really quickly because it sounds very simple, but it actually makes the story so much more interesting and fun. So if a few of you don't mind unmuting, and I'm gonna read the story, and I'll read it in English because I know we're not all Spanish speakers, and you just make the sound effects you think would be happening. There's no wrong answers. Okay, so unmute if you're ready to be brave or have had lots of coffee like me. One day, Cholo causes problems. I love that. Carlota is not happy. Carlota is mad. Oh, no. Oh, perfect. All right. I'm not going to go any further just because... Um, time, but this is such a fun activity. I sometimes will print the whole story, break students into groups, and then they each get to make up their own sound effects. It adds so much to the story, and it's very low teacher prep, which is my favorite kind of activity. Um, gesture reading, I'm just going to talk about really quickly. It's just you read the story, and the students, um, like, just do the TPR gestures that, that you've already taught them. And again, it just reinforces the meaning for the most important words. And it's something you can do with any students at all ages. Theater in style 
is one I learned from Craig Shi many years ago. And this one, you give the students a bunch of different styles. It could be unicorn style, pirate style, cowboy style, lazy style. And they go and they take the story that you've printed out for them and they act out the story in whatever style you have given them. And that usually turns out super hilarious too. And you can have the students act out different parts of the story for the whole class in these different styles. Um, and it's super fun. And I'm not watching the chat just because I'm talking super fast. Uh, last but not least, or one of the last things I have to show you, are we have coloring pages. Kids of all ages and adults, too, love coloring pages for the stories. They are in the appendix. And what I like to do is I like to print them. I tell students to pick their favorite coloring page. And sometimes I'll just have them color. I hang up the pages all over the room and I'll be like, where is the picture with the blue dog? And students will have to find the picture that matches what I'm describing. Sometimes I'll have the students add a detail to the story and I'll say, where is the picture with the dog and the cat? If a student added a cat to the picture and the students hunt around the room for it, it's a game and it's extra review of the vocabulary and target structures. Um, or for your more advanced students, you can have them add something and write what is happening. And again, you could put these all in the book. You could hang them around the room. You could turn it into a seek and find game. So much meat you can get out of it and very low teacher prep. And last but not least, because I know I've taken a lot of time, are these amazing comic book um, um, comic strips that we have. What I like to do for my lowest students is I will actually write out the story just once and then I'll copy that and they read and they draw. And that's fabulous because it gets them extra reading. You can put those all in a book and students will love to read over these and look at all their friends' drawings. For your more advanced students, you can write some of the sentence and then they can fill in the words or they could just write it themselves. And for your most advanced students, I usually will challenge them to add a detail or change something about the story. Um, and then again, that's just a whole nother twist on the story. Students can then take these home and retell the story at home. And that's great advertising for what an amazing thing you're doing in your class. Parents love when students go home and retell the stories. These are just a couple examples. This was a first grader retelling a story about Peppa Pig. And this was a, a, a second grader who was filling in some words and changing some of the details in the story. And um, I know that I'm about out of time, but the panoramas, not only can you use them to explore the world that we were just exploring in our story, but also they're great for I spy with students for the end of class. And um, I know I'm about out of time, but I just wanted to show you, uh, you can then use these stories to jump into culture. And the reason I'm talking about this is this is one of the questions we got in our survey form. And what I like to do is I will search for it, like the Cholo dogs have a whole history and they're very interesting. So you can search for it in the search tool through all of our titles. And then I found one in Voces por el Mundo Tres, and this is obviously way too advanced for most of my students, but then I could just take this version A and I could simplify it really easily in the editing tool and embed it in my title. And then I would have a really interesting reading about the Cholo dog that my students could learn the history of these dogs after they've just read the exciting story. I talked really fast. This should say one o'clock. I'm sorry if I talked too fast, but hopefully um, it was helpful and you got a lot of um, helpful information for your classes in it. Back to you, Erin. It was wonderful. Like, oh my gosh, you have so many wonderful ideas. And I just love what you feature, what you show, what you show off about those wonderful titles. Um, I love our elementary level titles. They're just beautifully done and have so many cool features. And just remember that everyone has access to them and um, grabbing a story from the elementary level level um, is not like a horrible thing to do for your middle or high school students. And you can play the video for them and you can do the coloring pages with them. Um, and yeah, and all the titles have the comic strip um, like form thing that you showed and that's in the resources section. Uh, so, you know, you can always have students draw the story, um, caption it, et cetera. And yeah, just so many great ideas. Thank you so much, Erica. Great job. <laughs>